Hey guys, and welcome back to the sea. What do we have on the show today? Today we have an Amiga 500 in from Mr. Joe. We're going to take a look at it. I was told it has a red screen. So, I got the adapter for the Dell here, and that's Ubuntu, and my Amiga 500 power supply that I just bumped the camera with. And we're going to hook this up and see what it does. Don't have a mouse hooked up, don't know anything about it. Well, I was eating some Twiglets. Mr. Jonathan found another bag. They're addicting. Okay, so we're just going to do this and see what happens. I don't know uh, what's wrong with it, what revision it is. Haven't opened the belly slot. Does it have a battery? I don't know. We're just going to plug her in and hit the button. You hear any banging? Mona's doing something in the kitchen. I think it's dinner. Let's just see what happens. Energize. Oh, red blinking power light and green screen. Could be easy. Could be complicated. Could be RAM. Could be an Agnes. Could be a receipt, whatever that's in this belly slot. Very rarely do I get lucky in any aspect. So I'm going to put this back to Ubuntu so I can watch the Hellraiser Lament screensaver kick on. X screensaver, by the way. Oh, she is heavy. We have a something. Oh, we have an A501 with no battery. Thank goodness. Gold Star RAM with a RTC. This is from Microbotics M501 RAM. Look at all those 256K boogers. Sprog Cat. Nice. Got a whole what's left of them. Remember when I showed this bag and there was 200 of these? Yeah, well. That's all that's left. I'm going to need a Torx bitted uh, thing. That will be T whatever. 10? Some Amigas are Phillips screwdriver or the, the plus. That's the, what we call Phillips. Missing a screw. One, two. They're very loose, so she's been open before. Three, four. Oh, missing two screws. Four screws. I can't get my finger in there. Okay. Black purple. They wrote on it instead of marking a one. Black's always to the left, purple, but it's four to the left, three to the right on this thing. This is an old girl. How do I know? I want this damn keyboard. Chicken lips. Key. Look at that. Wow. Thailand Tuck. High tech, too. This is pried open. It also has rust and fingerprints and grate. Here's your other missing screw from the case, was just put in here. These are all bent up. We have two screws on the belly door metal dude here. There's our lament screensaver. I don't know when it kicked on, but there it is. It will change its Hellraiser cube shape and do the whole thing. Love that screensaver. Five. Where are the chicken lips? Oh my god, it's got the speed bump Agnes of bullcrap. Because of myth of a speed bump at the end of the Westchester facility where the dump truck, the dump trucks, yeah. The shipping lorries, is that what you say over in the metric zone? Uh, UK, the shipping trucks would go over this bump and bump bump. If you've ever ridden in a cheese wagon school bus and jumped when a truck hit a bump, the contents would shift. Anyway. Agnes's would pop out, so they started putting these jail bars on them, so they wouldn't. It's all BS. Nichicon caps in here. Wow. And they have red marks on them, so somebody's been in here before me. That's what she said. She's been recapped already. That's good. I thought the CPU looked purple for a second, but it's catching hue off of my Commodore light right there. I'm just reseeding some crap. Lift in the pool, lift in the pool. Rom, she's gonna be one, two, one, three. All right, I hate these things with a passion. They're an X frame, you just feel like this and they pop off. They grabbed around the Agnes socket. She's got a one meg girl in her already. Interesting enough right there. Because the sockets tend to dry out, I'm a luber hole. 
Ah. Stick it in, squeeze, these legs retract, pull chip up. I squirted some juice on here so we can extract this chip without breaking this socket. This is hard as a rock, and I don't want to beat on said chip, so I'll just let the juice do its magic. Could just push down and reseat it. So, step one is I took her clothes off. Step two, we're just going to hit it, see what happens. Energize. This is Belly Ram Out Agnes Lubed. Probably, there you go, problem solved to me. Alright, let's put this in and see if it blows it up. That is unheard of on this channel. Unheard of. What is unheard of? An easy fix. Alright, energize with the belly ram in. There you go. All oh, done. Can you believe that crap? No, me neither. All right. I'm not putting the shielding back on. I am going to plug in the keyboard now. We're going to keep repeating the process. ATK 1.6. I didn't even look at this as NTSC or PAL. It is NTSC. All right. Let's pop this cherry. Special treatment today with a 3,000 Chris Edwards Belly Edition mouse. That's the uh, 3,000 Pregnant Mouse is what they call it. I'm down 19 pounds. It was 20, but... Kind of had some food. All right, 3,000 dirty pregnant mouse. Truck stop. ATK 1.6. Let's do audio too. What in the hell? Matsushita JU-256 or JU-263 floppy drive. Really cool. It's got a massive uh, motor in it for stepper. Massive. Memory. One mega chip RAM, already done. The high pitch whining you're hearing is because I'm charging my Devoom Tivu. There. Uh, let's see. Test the RAM. Sure, let's give her a quick test. See if it forks out. Red power light. Very nice. Usually let it go to three or better. CIAs, timers, NTSC, all good. Wow. Battery backed up clock is detected, but it doesn't have the correct, um, doesn't have a battery in it. Floppy drive, DF0, head calibration, 11 of 11, 11 of 11, 11 of 11. It's a little loud, could use some lithium. Video, RGB, crystal clear, audio. Very good. This is 1.6. It is not the one with the music mod. That is 1.8 or better. 1.18 to that disc. Audio. Beautiful. Reboot. Reboot circuit works. This keyboard is crusty and rusted out on here, but still want one. I don't know why. She should kick into PAL. PAL, beautiful. NTSC, big butt. Two hours later. So step two on Mr. Joe's Amiga 500 here is two things. I sent him a text and we were conversing about the 500 and I said, hey, I would really love to trade you keyboards. He said, I don't care. So I swapped him my keyboard for his. Now I got the check, the, the chicken lips one. I've always wanted it. Mine's in superb condition, it all works, test it out. So for doing that, he asked me about HDMI solutions for the Amiga 500. And I said, well, you know what? I have a Raspberry Pi Zero and an Amiga RGB to HDMI just sitting here in a bag. And for your kindness in trading me keyboards, I will hook you up with the RGB to HDMI. He asked to pay for it, I said, no. Please don't worry about that. You've hooked me up in ways you can't imagine. So I always try to share as much as I can, when I can, if I can. So I need to do two things. Number one, preheat the soldering station to 560 American thermal units. He's going to stop by. He's got some errands to run again, so he's just going to pick his machine up. I was going to ship it. So I'm going to open this 
girl back up. And I put a new capacitor, you can remember, in the A501. There we go. That looks so much better without that stupid shielding on. Here's our chip right here. If you hear an argument upstairs, that's uh, Mona and my daughter yelling at each other about something. Whoops, the Gennard won't fit in her. So we're going to use the old school chip puller like this. You can do this one, but a lot of times these don't grip really well and they slip. So I will go in, flat blade screwdriver, and twist. Come on, baby, let's do the twist. And when this doesn't twist anymore, I get a bigger one. Because I can get it up enough where then I can pinch it and pull it out. Be careful of the vidiot. What is the vidiot? It's a big resistor pack right here. Some of them are bent over. You don't want that. Now, this is an RGB to HDMI. It is a circuit board that is made for a Raspberry Pi in here. And you have to note the chip orientation. It also has a notch out for a button. You put this in the socket. I gotta make sure my legs are straight. I see one is bent a little bit. If you bend, you break one of these SIL turn pins, you'll know it. That's the board. The pie is gonna sit this way, okay? So it doesn't interfere with these massive capacitors. Then you put your Denise back in. These are SIL turn pins also, so you get one shot at this. Luckily, this is already pre set up for it. There's your Denise in the Raspberry or in the board header for the Pi. Now this has a header on it so this will be soldered into here, right? Well, we'll be, this will go in here. This header will go on this brand new unopened Raspberry Pi. Z I don't know if it's a zero or a zero W or two W. I forget. How about a Google? Are you stupid or something? Raspberry Pi Zero W. So this will go in here like this. I'll just stick it in here for now. I gotta solder this in, hence why soldering station's heating up. And that's how it'll sit. You'll have a micro HDMI or mini HDMI, not micro. These are USBs. Uh, to a card thing that'll go out here. I'll 3D print it. I'll show you it when it's done. And that's pretty much it. You have a small SD card you're gonna put in here. You're gonna dump a zip file onto an SD card, which is the RGB to HDMI code. You need to do nothing. It boots in like three seconds, if that. A $20 card that I bought in 2017, and the whole world went tits up, and I forgot about them. So, I'm going to share the wealth and use this in here. So with this currently sitting the way it is, I don't need it here on the table. Remember, CPU side up gets the long pins. So I'm going to stick this in here like this, and you'll flip it over, and it'll fall out. I could tape it, but I'm extremely lazy, so I will corner solder one piece and then corner solder another piece. Yep. Ouch. That's hot. Okay, so now I can rotate this board around in this holder of extra hands here and solder it in real quick. Okay. That is the soldering. We plug the board in, Pi facing you, so the ports are facing you, okay? This goes like this, and we'll click it in place. But, I'm gonna write the SD card. So, 8 gig, quick format, format, go, done. Open up your 8 gig card, right here. Okay, I found the software. Uh, I got the latest one, so I'm just going to grab all the stuff out of here and drag it to the 8 gig card. It'll, it's like 25 megs, it'll take a second or so, and I will have to use an HDMI cable directly to the Raspberry Pi. There you go. It automatically did. Amiga 60 Hertz didn't have to touch thing. One HDMI solution. This monitor is always dim until it warms up. A little fast for you people in PAL land, but this is how we had to watch it. HDMI, original floppy disk, nothing in but my audio and the power cord. 
HDMI is wrapping around to this thing and into the monitor. RGB to HDMI. So with the magic of YouTube, I can just warp to when I have it printed. I have a vent printed HDMI capable cord thing. I don't know how I'm going to do this. This will replace your sidecar door. You will put this in where you can do some kind of compact flash solution. But I wanted this one I found because it has a hole where you can put a cord out. Because I don't have a solution for this thing. I don't have an HDMI thing. So you would basically go like this and shove this out the side of your Amiga here. Ooh -hoo -hee. And do what you got to do for your whatever keyboard and whatever. And then you can just put this cover in here. Now this is the only one I found for what my poor self was attempting to do. And this will click into here like that. And on the side of your Amiga, you have a 500 with an HDMI cable hanging out of it. So there we go. Text of the owner with the results. And we'll put the cover back on. Screws back in it. And another Amiga is done. So, Mr. Joe. And we're good to go. Another Amiga setup saved and showing its finest. Thank you guys for coming along on this short repair. Just a little grease and a push. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And I hope you learned something. Uh. What do you know from funny, you bastard?